Hello and welcome to the very first demo from the new stack. My name is Janaki Ram and I'm one of the contributors at the new stack. I'm pretty excited to bring you today's demo on AI at Edge. This demo is based on Intel's UpSquared AI Vision X kit and Intel's OpenVINO toolkit. Before we take a look at the demo, let me set the context. Machine learning model has two lives. The first one is all about training, where we take historical data set, split that into a training and test data set, pass it through a complex algorithm like a neural network to find patterns among the data points. And once the model has been evolved with the right set of parameters and right set of patterns, it is going to be used in production where we try to predict based on unknown, unseen data. So when a fully trained model moves from training to production, it is actually called inferencing, which is the second life of the model. So to summarize, when we train, we are dealing with the first phase where we are trying to evolve the model. And during the second phase where we are using the model, this is called the inferencing. So those are the two lives, training and inferencing. Now for both these phases or the processes, we need massive computing power. Typically, training is associated with GPUs where they help or they assist the CPU in performing massive parallel computations. Because machine learning training, and for that matter even inferencing, is all about mathematical computation and parallelization, the processor or the CPU alone is not sufficient. So to help the existing CPU, we add coprocessors in the form of GPUs that take over the parallelization and massive computation. So the combination of CPUs and GPUs results in high throughput during the training. Now, when the model moves to inference, particularly when it is deployed in an edge device that has constraints in terms of CPU storage and memory. And of course, the processor is not just fast enough to deal with inferencing. We need to supplement that or complement that by an additional coprocessor. But unfortunately, these edge devices are not powerful enough to run full-blown GPUs like the way the GPUs assist the CPU in the training environment. So here, we need a much more efficient low power, low footprint device that can help the CPU perform inferencing at speed. The goal for inferencing is always reduce latency. When the data point hits the edge device, it has to perform the prediction in milliseconds. And that's where we need to assist the CPU with additional processors that will ultimately speed up the inferencing and reduce the latency. And this is exactly where we have the new breed of processors. They're also called AI accelerators available in the market. So they are responsible for taking over some of the calculations from the CPU and ultimately speeding up the inferencing process. So today you have the choice of using a Jetson Nano module or an NVIDIA Xavier module. Of course, Intel's Movidius and Mirai X VPU, which is called the Vision Processing Unit and Google's Edge TPU. There are a couple of more uh, accelerators available for the Edge, particularly from Qualcomm and even Huawei. So today's focus is about using Intel's Mirai and the Movidius VPU for accelerating AI at Edge. So let me now show you the device that I have and then walk you through the use case that I'm going to demonstrate. All right. Here we have the Intel AI UpSquared Vision X kit. This is procured from upsquared.org. And this edge computing device is actually running a full-blown Intel Atom processor. And as you, you can see, this comes with two gigabit Ethernet ports and uh, one HDMI display port. The other one is a typical display port and two USB 3.0 ports and an additional USB 3 at the rear and an OTG port to connect peripherals. I actually connected a USB hub and I could attach almost every peripheral that I use with my desktop. Now, apart from this, the kit also comes with a camera that is capable of feeding the image grabs and the feed to the edge computing device. 
this can be hooked on to one of the available USB ports. I also tried connecting uh, a typical Logitech webcam and that worked just fine. But this is a, a production grade camera that can be easily plugged into the Edge device. Apart from these two, there is also a power supply rated at 5 volt 6 amps that is responsible for powering the whole kit. Now don't compromise on the power because you need a certain level of rating to run this edge computing device. So the power supply that comes with it is sufficient enough to drive the entire kit. Now in terms of software, this kit runs Ubuntu. It, it actually came with Ubuntu 16.04 and I changed that to Ubuntu 18.04 and installed uh, the latest version of Intel Open Vino Toolkit. I will take a closer look at that in the upcoming uh, segments. So the camera plus the kit, uh, of course with the power supply, is all you need to get started with your computer vision projects. Now I'm going to show you what's behind the scenes of this kit in the in the next segment. So in case you are interested in buying this kit, you can visit upshop.org and uh, uh, in one of the sections here, you can actually find the Upsquared AI Vision X developer kit. It comes with a standalone uh, CPU without the VPU or you could also order one of the um, configurations that comes with the Miraid X VPU. So if you're interested, you can take a look at the specifications here. Uh, this is something that I just covered, but there are some additional accessories that you might want to order. Uh, for example, there is a, a mini PCIe board that's available for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. If you want, you can also attach an LTE module to it. Uh, I didn't opt for one, but it is pretty easy to procure and attach it to your kit. So the most interesting part, as I mentioned earlier, is the inbuilt Intel Movidius Mirai X version B VPU. If you don't want to use this, if you already have an x86 PC with an Ubuntu, you might want to buy an Intel Movidius NCS, that is the neural compute stick, and use it with your typical Intel NUC or even an Intel desktop running Ubuntu. Uh, or for that matter, if you're running Open Vino Toolkit, you could actually use any of the supported operating systems, including Windows and Mac. So this is all about the kit. Now I'm going to switch to the demo again and show you what's behind the scenes, what's beneath the chassis of this Upsquared AI Vision X kit. All right, now let me show you what really goes beneath the chassis. So here is the actual system on chip board that powered the Intel AI Vision X kit. So this comes with the complete one board system on chip configuration, which has exactly the same components that we have seen earlier. Uh, for example, you will see that there is a pretty large heat sink, and then it comes with two gigabit ethernet ports, two USB 3 ports in the front, a HDMI port and a display port, one of the USB 3 ports at the rear, and an OTG port for you to connect accessories. Uh, on the top, you also notice that there is a Movidius Mirai X VPU that is connected to the uh, MPCIe slot. Now, the large heat sink is helping the CPU cool down a little bit because there is no there is no fan. It's a fanless chassis, and this heat sink will help it. The most powerful aspect of this kit is obviously the MPCIe powered Movidius Mirai X Vision Processing Unit, and that is responsible for running the uh, mathematical computations uh, coming from the CPU. It basically offloads the mathematical computations to the VPU, and this is responsible for performing the inferencing at, at the speed that's required. So when you actually connect the camera to the kit, and when you run the uh, Open Vino toolkit, you are basically offloading the inferencing part partially to the VPU. And this is responsible for reducing the latency and speeding up the inferencing process. So you can also connect a USB, but this is the most uh, viable form factor, which is included in the kit and comes in a very compact form factor. So in the next segment, I'm going to show you the Arduino units that I use for this demo. 
Okay, this is one of the Arduino Yun microcontrollers that I'm using for the demo. This is going to be connected to the Edge device powered by the Intel AI Vision X kit. And if you see, there is a LED display, a seven segment display that is responsible for showing us some numbers depending on the object that is going to be used for the inference. In this scenario, I'm actually using a vehicle uh, to be detected. So depending on the vehicle type, the toll fee equivalent will be showing up on the display. And this is a typical Arduino Yun. And if you are wondering what is this, this is basically the Grove Shield, which just makes it easy for me to connect additional actuators. And this is connected to a power bank, which is a, a standalone device. The third device that I'm using in my demo is another Arduino Yun. And this is connected to two LEDs via the Grove Shield. One of them is the red LED and the other one is the green LED. And because this scenario is all about detecting the objects, which is a vehicle type, one of the bulbs will glow up depending on the vehicle type that we show to the camera. So the Arduino Yun plays the role of a microcontroller that is talking to the edge device. And like the previous one, this is completely standalone. It is powered by a power bank and uh, uses the Wi-Fi to talk to the edge device. Let's see the demo in action. So here is my Intel AI Vision X kit connected to your Wi-Fi dongle that is responsible for the communication. So the microcontrollers powered by Arduino Yun are actually talking to the same Wi-Fi. So one of the Arduino Yuns is connected to the seven segment display and the other one is connected to a couple of LEDs and both of them are powered by standalone power banks. Because they share the same Wi-Fi network, all the devices are talking to each other and this could be in a complete offline mode. Then there is a typical Logitech webcam that is connected to the edge device. And as soon as we place a device, it is going to sense the object and uh, based on the neural network, we'll actually detect the object type and send a message to one of the Arduino Yuns. And depending on the object type, we'll see a different visual interface visual indication in both the Arduino units. So once we place a device, it is going to be sent to the Movidius Mirai X VPU that is responsible for inferencing. And that is going to send a message to the Arduino Yun. And to facilitate this communication, apart from the Wi-Fi that is acting as the transport protocol, I'm also using MQTT as the message broker. Now, what you see here is a toy car. And when I place this in front of the camera, you will see that the bulb glows up, the green bulb glows up. And the numbers that you see in one of the Arduino units is uh, showing 50. That could be the toll fee. So effectively, this is a smart toll gate scenario that is showing us the vehicle type through a visual indicator and also the typical toll fee that may be associated with the vehicle type. So as soon as the camera finds the image, it is passed on to the uh, deep learning neural network model and that is offloaded to the VPU and depending on the MQTT message, one of the Arduino units or both the Arduino units act. Now what you see here is a bus, a toy bus and as soon as I place that in front of camera, you notice that the red bulb comes up and the toll fee also changes. It is slightly higher than the previous one because it's a heavy vehicle type. And the architecture is very, very straightforward. So the camera acts as an image sensor and it is sending the image grab to the uh, processor and from there to the VPU and from VPU to an MQTT topic. And one of the Arduino units or both the Arduino units are subscribed to the same MQTT topic. And when they receive the message, they act on that. So this is a pretty intuitive way of looking at AI at edge. And it is also AI IoT because it's a combination of artificial intelligence and IoT devices. So we have the complete environment set up in an offline mode. And that is the advantage of using edge computing. You don't need internet, you don't need access to cloud. Okay, now let's take a look at the steps involved in building this entire use case or this scenario. The first step is using the Intel Open Vino Toolkit to optimize a model. So I have taken the standard MobileNet SSD CAFE model 
and ran it through what is called as the OpenVINO Toolkit's model optimizer. And what the model optimizer does is to convert the model or rather optimize the model for the VPU. So we are basically passing the model through a process called quantization, where the 32-bit uh, floating point is converted to a 16-bit floating point, which doesn't require the same horsepower uh, as the desktop environments or servers that are typically used in inferencing. So that's the very first step. We convert an existing deep learning model, either written in CAFE, TensorFlow, or MXNet, into a, a model, a format that is optimized for the Intel Movidius and Mirai environment. And that is provided by the OpenVINO toolkit. So once we have the model optimized, we essentially get two files. One is an XML file and a bin file, which we are going to use in our program for inferencing. So what you see here is the Python program that is using OpenCV and OpenVINO toolkit. So once I run the cafe model through the model optimizer, I end up getting an XML file and the bin file, which I load through OpenCV and OpenCV is tightly integrated with OpenVINO toolkit. So it can essentially understand the format that is generated by the OpenVINO model optimizer. So I read the neural network optimized for the backend. And in our case, the backend is set to Mirai. This could be a GPU, this could be an FPGA, this could even be a CPU because OpenVINO Toolkit effectively supports multiple target environments. In our case, since we are using a Mirai X VPU, we set the target to the Mirai. So these two lines are very critical because they, they inform or they instruct OpenCV to offload the processing, the uh, inferencing to the uh, Mirai X VPU. So once that is done, we go ahead and run a typical traditional OpenCV program where I'm uh, going through every frame and finding out um, the, the objects that are actually found. So here, as soon as either a bus or a car is detected, I publish a message to an MQTT topic. So the MQTT topic is cam slash infer. Now, if there is no object that is detected, which is not a bus or a car, I basically publish none. And this is an indication to switch off the bulb and show zero on the display. So remaining code is very typical OpenCV code. The key thing here is how we are actually using OpenVINO toolkit tightly integrated with OpenCV and how we are integrating that with MQTT. So once the object is detected and published to the MQTT topic, that's where the Adveno Yun will take over. So this is the code that I have used for Adveno Yun. And uh, again, I'm using the MQTT header here and we subscribe to the cam infer. And as soon as the object detected is a bus, we turn red LED and turn off the green LED and same thing with car. Uh, basically, the red goes off and green lights up. And if it is none, then no bulb shows up. So that is basically the simple code I have written in one of the Adveno units responsible for controlling the bulbs. When it comes to display, everything remains the same. Here, I basically show the toll fee by displaying a number which is either 100 or 50. And if the interesting object is not detected, which is of our interest, that is basically the car or bus, then um, it, it, it goes to zero. So pretty straightforward. Uh, this is the code that's running inside my, um, the UpSquared uh, AI Vision X kit. And uh, all of this is, is published as a tutorial at the new stack. And this code would be made available to you as well. So that was an end-to-end -end demo of using AI at Edge based on Intel's Movidius Mirai X VPU and Intel's OpenVINO toolkit. I hope you found this demo useful and I'm looking forward to bringing you exciting demos from the space of AI, containers, microservices, and of course, the convergence of machine intelligence and modern infrastructure. Stay tuned. This is Janakiram signing off.